In this lecture, we're going to talk about the Kennedy Class 4 survey and design rules. We'll also talk about the tooth replacements that are used on the Kennedy Class 4. The Kennedy Class 4, by definition, is a single but bilateral, meaning it crosses the midline, edentulous area located anterior to the remaining natural dentition. The fulcrum is the line around which the partial denture rotates under function. The point of rotation of this RPD framework is through the two teeth next to the anterior edentulous area. This is the position of the Kennedy Class IV fulcrum. This is an example of a Kennedy Class IV partial denture. When the patient eats sticky foods in the anterior area, that partial denture wants to lift up and rotate around that fulcrum line designated in red. When the patient bites down on something hard, the back of the partial wants to flip up and rotate around that fulcrum line. Which two direct retainers will most effectively prevent the anterior from rotating around that fulcrum line and the partial denture being dislodged when pe the patient eats sticky foods? Number 6 and 11 or 2 and 15? The answer would be 6 and 11, the two direct retainers anterior to the fulcrum line or as close to it as possible. Let's talk about some of the rules for the Kennedy Class 4 design. First, you need retention anterior to the fulcrum line of the partial denture. In this example, the mesial facial surface would be the best for tooth number 5 and 12. You also need retention posterior and far away from the main fulcrum line, like the distal buckle of tooth number 2 and 15. If you look at the side with the arrows, the greater the distance there is between those two points of retention that you choose, the more stable that prosthesis will be. Now, obviously you would like to have the one that's in the anterior, anterior to the fulcrum line. Sometimes that's not possible. You might move back to that second premolar for more um, aesthetic results. But the greater that distance, the more stable the prosthesis will be. Looking at this illustration, the side labeled A would be more difficult to dislodge the posterior direct retainers than on the side labeled B because of the greater separation between the points of retention. The mechanical advantage is in favor of the blue side. Does it make significant difference to go from the second molar to the first molar? Again, think of your example of levers and the principles of mechanical advantage. It would depend upon the force that's exerted in that anterior edentulous area. You must satisfy the need for balanced retention when you design a partial. If you have a buckle retainer on one side, let's say we put one on number five, then you must have at least one buckle retainer on the opposing side. It could be number 12, 13, 14, or 15. Ideally, you'd like to see it on number 12 because it's exactly opposite on the arch, but you might choose number 13 because of aesthetics. It does not have to be on the exact same tooth. The fourth retainer can be on either side of the tooth, the buckle or the lingual, as indicated with blue, because you've already satisfied the rule for balanced retention. It's preferably located on the distal buckle or the buckle side of tooth number two, but the undercuts are not always present or the location of the undercut may be unfavorable. Remember though that we can alter a tooth to create an ideal undercut, which would be no higher than the middle third of the tooth and preferably in the cervical third. We can alter the tooth so long as we don't perforate that enamel or mutilate the tooth. A direct retainer arm sitting on dentin may give the patient a zing when the partial flexes into the undercut on its delivery or function. Theoretically, those retentive arms are passive once the partial is seated. Direct retainer arms must be located on enamel or a restoration that is strong. 
a composite restoration will wear under function more easily than amalgam or a metal restoration. The mandibular posterior molars often lean to the lingual and sometimes to the mesial if there's not an opposing tooth in front of them. It's not uncommon to see lingual retention on the posterior mandibular molars. We have still satisfied balanced retention on the illustration shown above. The only combination of retention that you cannot have is buckle-buckle on one side of the arch and lingual-lingual on the opposing side of the arch. The partial denture would tend to want to dislodge itself easily in the direction of the arrow. Rest must be placed on teeth next to or very near the edentulous area. The reason I say near is that we do not rest on lateral incisors. So if we had just two centrals missing, we would move over to the canines to place rest near that edentulous area. Embrasure rests are used when a direct retainer or reciprocal component must pass through the embrasure of two teeth to get to the opposite side. Resting on both teeth will prevent the feeling that the teeth are being wedged apart during function of the partial. An exception to this would be if the teeth are rotated or if there's a space where that embrasure rest is not necessary to prevent the wedging effect. If you place an embrasure rest on the tooth next to the edentulous area, as shown above, an additional mesial rest is not absolutely necessary, but does afford better support for the edentulous tooth replacements. Another option here would be to place your direct retainers on the second premolars and then to add an additional rest on the mesial of the first premolar for support of those tooth replacements. You will usually have four clasp assemblies on the Kennedy Class IV partial denture design, two on each side. Any more than that is overkill. In this case, we have number two and number four, number 13 and number 15, and we have chosen those particular teeth for aesthetic purposes. The more stable design would be number 2, number 5, number 12, and number 15. This design places the clasp assemblies very close together in the posterior area on number 3 and 4, and 14 and 13. This will prove to be the most aesthetic design of those that we've seen. But mechanically, it does not separate the retention as much as possible and is not as favorable as if we place them on number 2 and 5 and 12 and 15. You can see by looking at the picture that it's a very aesthetic case showing the least amount of metal clasp arms, but the partial's apt to pull loose in the anterior more easily when sticky foods are encountered. Another mistake is that there needs to be a rest next to or close to the edentulous area. Therefore, on this particular case, there should be a rest on the mesial of number 5 and number 12 to support those tooth replacements. The clasp of choice, as we said on the Kennedy Class 4, is the cast circumferential clasp. Being totally tooth supported, the Class 4 can have a rigid direct retainer. In the example prosthesis on the slide, we have too many direct retainers on the area of 12 through 15. A better choice, if the undercuts were present, would be the mesial facial of number 12 and the distal facial of number 15, separating retentions better. The direct retainer on tooth number 12 on a maxillary arch is a very poor choice 
because that direct retainer going from the mesial to the distal would be very unesthetic. Here is a sample design that has the least amount of metal. It has two direct retainers on each side separating retention as much as possible with the retentive tip anterior to the fulcrum line and as far away from the fulcrum line as possible. It has the least number of rests that are considered acceptable. It also dips down on the maxillary major connector on the lingual, avoiding the marginal gingiva by a minimum of 5 to 6 millimeters and exposing as much tissue as possible. The hole is also at least the size of a nickel, and that's the smallest that it can be. Base attachment is used on this design and shown in the uh, drawing, but the facing would have been more aesthetic on the maxillary arch. Generally, the Kennedy Class 4 does not have a need for indirect retention. The only exception is when the Class 4 has a real long anterior edentulous area there is a need for indirect retention to prevent rotation around that fulcrum line and prevent lifting of the anterior tooth replacement area of the prosthesis. The distal rest on number 18 and 31 act as indirect retainers. They prevent rotation around the fulcrum line in an occlusal direction. There are several differences between two supported and extension-based removable partial dentures. The Kennedy Class 3 and 4 are your tooth supported which allow for rigid clasping systems and the Kennedy class 1 and 2 have extension bases which require special clasping mechanisms to reduce torque forces on the abutment teeth. Those differences are in the support, method of impression, need for indirect retention, the base material used, direct retainers used, and in the major connectors. Those are shown on this slide. There are several tooth replacement mechanisms for the Kennedy Class 4. They are base attachment with base and teeth, facings, reinforced acrylic ponics, tube teeth, braided post, the metal tooth. These slides may be a repeat of the discussion in the Kennedy Class 3 lecture. You may skip it if you choose, but it really doesn't hurt to review these materials again. Here are some examples of facings. As you can see, the facing looks like it emerges from the soft tissue if properly done. It should have metal that backs up the denture tooth to protect it from popping off under occlusion forces. The picture on the lower left is of a framework that had to be remade due to insufficient metal backing where the denture tooth face kept popping off. When it is a posterior tooth, it has an occlusal in metal with just the buccal surface of the tooth in white acrylic or porcelain. As a review, the facing indications are 1. For large bony undercuts that are labial to the ridge, that flange would have to stand out quite a ways from the ridge. You want to use it when you have a deep vertical bright and you want to protect the tooth from breaking off by placing that metal backing on it. It also comes in handy when you have a spacing problem and you need to place some diastomas uh, and yet make the tooth look the same size and aesthetic. You can use them or should always use them in an anterior single tooth replacement situation. If you use base attachment for a little single anterior tooth, you're often going to find it with base attachment that it will break off and end up in that sandwich that you're eating. It's also an aesthetic reconstruction if all the circumstances are right as far as ridge size and shape and fullness, etc. The ridge loss has to be not very extensive to use the facing, otherwise the teeth will look very long. And you don't want to use them if you have a real long span. They're really not recommended for more than uh, six teeth in an area. You can see in this picture the acrylic resin flange on the upper left versus facings on the right. Now this is an interim denture and there's an acrylic resin that is available that matches gingiva more closely. But it can be difficult to match as you may have to work with pigmentation and customized dentures to try to simulate the natural pigmentation.
The facing allows the natural tissues to show and is more aesthetic. The contraindications for use of a facing are if you have a large bony defect where the facing would have to be extremely long, as in the upper left picture, you don't want to use that facing. If you have a large edentula span greater than six teeth, you may find some problems arising with the use of the facing. And where you anticipate that you're going to need to reline the partial in the future, facings cannot be relined. One of the most common tooth repairs is the single denture tooth that breaks off either base attachment or pure acrylic area. So, in order to prevent that from happening, a single facing placed in that area, which has metal backing it all the way up to almost the incisal edge, is a good choice for the single tooth replacement over just placing one little base attachment loop in a tooth held on by a minimal amount of acrylic. Pictured here are large bony undercuts. If base attachment is used, the base flange must stick out away from the tissues from the most prominent part of the bony undercut to the depth of the vestibule in order to seat the partial. The partial denture may have one path of placement that does not concur with allowing the flange to rest on the tissues. You may not be able to rotate that prosthesis into position, keeping the flange close to the tissues. Therefore, the use of the facing is a good way to eliminate that problem if the ridge is not too resorbed. Oh, the deep vertical bite, what a problem. On this case, can you picture base attachment with space under it for acrylic resin and an additional room for acrylic resin base on top of that base attachment in order to lock the teeth onto the framework adequately. Look at the partial on the bottom right. You only need enough room for the thickness of the major connector to get through that space if you use facings. Granted, we would have to do a little bit of enamelplasty on those lower incisors, but not massive reduction as would be needed if we used base attachment. Here are two examples where spacing was a problem and an aesthetic solution was achieved with the facing. It may not be completely aesthetic to your satisfaction, but this is one way to handle a difficult problem. On that upper right, you may have chosen to do orthodontics and bring those two centrals closer to the midline and then crown both the laterals and the central incisors. Or, you may have chosen extraction of the four incisors and an implant reconstruction. These are other more expensive solutions to the problem this patient has, but the patient may not be able to financially afford those more expensive choices. Here's a look at a prosthesis on the master cast where a diastema is created in the prosthesis by utilizing the facing. Facings provide an aesthetic solution for the anterior tooth replacement case. The right side is another case that, that facings was used as a solution to the problem. Can you place this framework into this area shown on the lower picture? You need to have plastic under the base attachment and two millimeters of acrylic over it to lock the teeth securely into place and keep it from fracturing. Yes or no? If not, what's your solution to this deep bite problem? Here at school, we've limited the uh, number of teeth that can be replaced by facings to six because we found anything larger than that. We lost some stability that the base attachment could give us along with the option of being able to reline that area when changes took place. According to our rules, can you do facings on this particular case? The answer is no, because we have eight teeth missing here that need to be replaced, and our rule says that you can only have six if you want to do facings. So base attachments indicated on this one. If there is extreme ridge resorption and the teeth would look very long 
or acrylic gingival tissue is needed for aesthetics, then we would use base attachment in the tooth replacement area. Can you use facings in this case? Obviously no. The young lady has a high smile line and if we used facings, the teeth would look very long. Just to remind you of the facing contraindications, they are the large bony defects where facings would be extremely long, where you have a large dentalist span greater than six teeth, and where you anticipate that you'd need a reline in the future. Another type of replacement for the Kennedy Class 4 would be the reinforced acrylic ponic, or the wrap, which has metal incorporated into the denture tooth, and then the acrylic is added to cover that metal area. It has many of the same indications as the facing. It's probably more aesthetic than the facing as it has less metal show through at the incisal edge. The metal can make the facing appear gray in those areas. There is less tooth supported by metal backing, which may not be a factor unless you have a deep vertical bite and have significant amount of denture tooth which is unsupported by metal. There could be a greater chance that the cusp would break off, but the tooth is very securely held in the framework. The indications for a tube tooth are that it is a single tooth edentulous space in the anterior without a deep vertical overbite present. Also, it's a single posterior tooth replacement where you want aesthetics over a metal tooth or over a facing which has a metal occlusal. Because of the indications that we just gave in the previous slide, the tube tooth would not be used on the Kennedy Class 4 because by definition of Kennedy Class 4, we have the edentulous area that crosses the midline and therefore it involves multiple denture teeth. A tube tooth can be used for a single tooth edentulous space in the anterior, so long as there's not a deep vertical bite present. Just to remind you though, the contraindications for tube teeth are, first, if you have a deep vertical overbite that interferes with occlusion, you would need something more substantial like metal backing that tooth for reinforcement. Also, an area that requires a reline in the future is not a good indication for a tube tooth. Both the facing and the tube tooth have metal on the tissue surface and cannot be relined. Also, the width of the edentulous space, if it's insufficient to be able to place a denture tooth in that area and have the nail head come up through the middle of the tooth for reinforcement, then you might want to think in terms of a metal tooth replacement, but we wouldn't want those necessarily in the anterior of a Kennedy Class 4. The braided post indications are similar to those of the tube tooth. In its construction, it may be placed on base attachment, which allows for the prosthesis to be relined. It is constructed by twisting two pieces of rope wax, which gives the braid design which creates retention for the tooth. It is used in the anterior or posterior area for reinforcement and retention of a prosthetic tooth. When you have a small space between teeth, there's not sufficient space to place the retentive mechanism of a tube tooth, maybe not the space to allow for an aesthetic facing or the space to place a denture tooth on base attachment. In that case, you would use a metal tooth which is waxed during the framework construction in occlusion with the opposing arch. Here's an example where base attachment is requested, but you really don't have enough room for the denture tooth to fit into that small area. You're just as well off to either do nothing or to have a metal tooth waxed into the framework at fabrication time. Mounted models have to be sent to the laboratory at the time of framework fabrication when you do a metal tooth like this. Sometimes we do what's called an overlay in order to even out the occlusal plane and incorporate the metal tooth into the rest. An overlay partial 
indenture is shown in the lower right picture. The metal tooth may be used when you want a really strong posterior tooth replacement. You would not usually find this on a Kennedy Class 4 design with all the anteriors in metal, unless you've been cast to play a maniac in a James Bond epic movie. This patient has full natural dentition on the upper arch. Do you think this case has to be mounted in order to make this framework work? What do you think of this replacement with tube teeth? Is it a good solution? The answer is no for a couple of reasons. The tubes of the tube teeth are way too lingual, which means that the acrylic around them would either be thin or the tube itself would actually be sticking out the lingual of this replacement area, which would actually weaken the area. Two, the defect displayed is pretty large as far as amount of resorption. So the teeth would have to be very long or else you would have to add more base up at the uh, gingival area and this may not be very aesthetic. This design is terrible in that there's no rest next to or near the edentulous area. There seems to be rest seats on the two adjacent teeth, the laterals, but are not utilized in the RPD design and they shouldn't be. We do not rest on laterals on the maxillary or mandibular arch. They're not very strong teeth. Rest must be placed near or next to the edentulous area to provide support for this tooth area. The nearest rests are all the way back on the first premolars. The very least acceptable design on this framework would be to have rest on the canines and then to plate the laterals to get to that edentulous area and to have some guiding planes. Base attachment is the better choice for this design. Base attachment should be used on the Kennedy Class 4 when you have more than six teeth in the anterior edentulous area and when you have considerable resorption where the teeth would appear very long. It is also used when you would like to have added stability and you feel that there's going to be a need for a reline in the future. The picture on the right just displays the appearance of base attachment. What do you think the Kennedy classification of this removable partial denture is? All the replacement teeth are showing. Well it happens to be a Kennedy class 3. There's a single edentulous area but it does not cross the midline as is required for the Kennedy Class 4 classification. What do you think of this restoration? There's two of them actually. The one on the right is an RPD at the wax try-in stage. Do you find them aesthetic or unesthetic? They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So who are we to say what is beautiful to this patient? But Will you be doing any of these in your practice? Some people say they will not do restorations like this in their practice. Some suggestions for you. Go to youtube.com and search for my channel under Ann Winchie. Review the survey and design seminar tapes for the Kennedy Class 4 maxillary and mandibular cast. There are two sets of tapes of four each. Print the sheet forms on the next three pages and actually do the drawings of the designs with the tapes. It will make you aware of all the rules for the proper placement of the component parts of the partial denture. You will be able to recognize partial denture frameworks that meet the proper specifications. Here is a form for the Kennedy Class 4 maxillary cast number double dot for the Survey and Design Seminar of the Maxillary Kennedy Class 4. Here is the Kennedy Class 4 CAST number 36 Seminar Drawing Sheet. Print it and use it to design the partials. Print this screen and use it for any of the Part C tapes of the Survey and Design Seminars. Have a great day, and don't forget the following little message.